Hello everyone and welcome to another tip video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colts and in this video we're going to be going through some of the differences between Zoho Projects 7 and the new Zoho Projects 8 release. We've had a couple questions about this from clients and from here on YouTube so we thought it would be a good time to kind of just go through and highlight some of the new features and functionalities as some of them are actually pretty significant uh, in Projects 8 and it's very likely worth it to go ahead and switch over. So before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Uh, make sure to leave any questions, feedback or comments in the comment section below and uh, try to read and respond to each and every one of those for you. So without any further ado, let us go ahead and jump on into the walkthrough. Alrighty, so here we are within Zoho Projects, and right now I'm in Zoho Projects 7. Um, we'll see we've got in the top right here this little switch to new version button. Um, so I'm going to walk through some of the new functionality here, um, and I'll be flipping back and forth between Zoho Projects uh, 7 and Zoho Projects 8, and I'll try to be pretty clear uh, when I'm making that change. Uh, but when in doubt, just check this thing up in the top right. If you see this rocket ship, you know that I'm in Zoho Projects 7. Um, and if you don't see it, it means I'm over in Zoho Projects 8. So one of the things that's actually different with uh, Projects 8 actually happens before we've ever created a project. So here I'm in the All Projects view, and I can go ahead and create a new project here in the top right. Uh, and what we'll see is that I don't have any templates. Right, that's because this is in a demo account and I don't have any unique project templates set up. Um, for those who've been using projects for a while, you'll know that a project template uh, kind of makes or breaks the project itself, right? It's the predefined critical path um, of all the various tasks and dependencies that we have set up. Um, and in this case, I don't have any templates created. But if we go ahead and switch to the new version, so I'm gonna jump on over to projects eight now. Um, we'll see little UI difference here on the projects list. We'll get into that a little bit more in a moment. But the big thing I wanna show with Zoho Projects 8 is that when I go ahead and create a new project, now I have a full bank of gallery templates. So these are essentially just example templates that Zoho has created to cover certain kind of key processes or industries. Um, obviously, a lot of these might need some adjustment, but I did want to highlight that these are here now in Zoho Projects 8, because oftentimes one of the hardest parts of getting started in projects is just getting those templates defined. And I'll tell you, for me, uh, it helps me to work from an example, right? So if I can look at one of these and go, okay, we're an IT support company, we're a web development company, right? Now we can at least start here with some type of baseline and then go ahead and use it to tweak and adjust and uh, you know create our version of that template. For this case here, I'm going to go ahead and use this software development template. So I'll go ahead and click use. And just like that, it has created a new project for us. So if I come back over to this projects tab, we'll now see we have two. We have this original Explore Zoho projects. This is just the example one that comes out of the box. And then we have this new software development project um, that we'll be able to access and work with. Obviously, it's set the start date as today. I'm recording this on the 31st, and it has kind of cascaded all of those tasks through the end date of, uh, you know, 729. Now that we've kind of gone through that first big difference uh, in terms of just creating a project and being able to use those templates, let's go ahead and jump into a specific project and kind of show some of the differences here that are available within Projects 8. All right, so here we are inside of a particular project um, where we've created this project from that example project template from the gallery. So we'll go through a couple of these kind of important tabs up at the top. Don't worry, we're not going to go through each and every one. Not all of them have significant differences in the new setup. For example, this dashboard tab, if I go back to the old version here, so now in Zoho Project 7, we'll see this is about the same, right? We've got all the same types of high-level reports available to us. Nothing about Zoho Projects 8 is really changing the core structure of projects. A lot of it are just usability and workflow improvements um, as you're actually using the tool. But here, if I go ahead, I'll show you here and switch back to the new version. So now back to 8. 
this is just about the same, right? We've got all these same types of reports. Maybe they ended up in slightly different places, uh, but we can reorganize them anyways. So the dashboard tab, nothing too crazy going on there. Where things really start to get interesting is in this task list tab. The task list here, one of the big goals with Zoho Projects 8 was to give more functionality on one screen. Where a lot of people kind of started to struggle with this application is in just moving between all these different tabs to organize different pieces of information or view that information in some type of different report or view. Uh, primarily the Gantt chart, which we'll, we'll show in just a moment here. One of the big things with Zoho Projects 8 is that they've kind of redone this task list view to function more like a sheet, like a spreadsheet or, you know, a sheet view if you're familiar within something like Zoho CRM. So if I go back to the old version now, you know, in uh, Project 7 here, we'll see that let's imagine I wanted to rename a task. So this blueprint sign off task here up at the top. And I go ahead and I come in here and I add, you know, an edit to the name of this task. Now it'll go ahead and save and I'm good to go. Within the new version, so if I jump over to projects eight, now I can make that kind of change just here from the list view. And I don't actually have to click into that task, open it up and make the update to the name of it right there. So you'll see that really throughout this entire tab, we're able to make any types of updates that we want to to this particular task. And you might be saying, OK, well, we could always do that, right? We could always in Zoho Project 7 come in and update the status to in progress and be good to go. The challenge is, let's say I wanted to update multiple things at once, right? So I want to update this start date. We're going to move it back one day or maybe we'll move it up one day. I cannot, and it's tough for to show this here because uh, you don't see my keyboard, but if I hit tab, I don't go anywhere. I can't kind of like tab across these columns and make updates to multiple things easily. I have to click, update, click, update, click, update, column by column. Now, if I switch to Zoho Projects, um, Zoho Projects 8, now I can make an edit, hit tab, I don't have any teams, so I'll hit tab again. Now I can reassign this, hit tab again, go to testing. And so we're just able to essentially tab navigate or use keystrokes to navigate throughout more and more of the system. Again, this is one of those things that for some people, they might say, hey, I just want to click, right? I don't really care about this. For power users of Zoho projects, this is a pretty big deal, right? It allows you to move through a particular list view much more quickly than having to click column by column by column just to be able to navigate around. Now, another way that these kind of keystroke commands come in and can be very useful is when we're actually adding new tasks. So for a lot of companies, they kind of will create a project from a template, um, but then we need to fill in some of the blanks, right? Some of the unique information that we're actually working on for a particular client. And so in this case, I can add a task, hit enter, add another, add a third, and now I'm going crazy. Right? And I can just motor through and add task after task after task after task. And now let's say I want to make assignments here. I can get the demo user. And make that same adjustment to each of the following columns here, um, all just using the new native kind of keystroke command driven workflow here within Zoho projects. Um, so we'll include a link to the uh, kind of update news here that Zoho put out around this in the description below. That'll cover like each of the individual keystroke commands that are available here. Um, they've added a lot. For some of them, if you kind of highlight a certain section, you know, like if I show you on the left here, like ZT will bring me to the task list. Um, ZP will bring me to the list of projects. So they kind of show you on a couple of these. Super useful just to be able to kind of motor through and not have to click to navigate across each of these various items. So I'm going to get rid of my demo tasks here. And then we can go ahead and show what I think is one of the most kind of important and nice to see user interface updates with Zoho Projects 8. Alrighty, so here looking at the task list, those who use Zoho Projects a lot probably know that one of the big things you want to do in projects is view things on a Gantt chart. Historically, we had to come over to this reports tab. Right. So if I go back to my old version here, so again, now back to Zoho Project 7, we'll see that my views on the tasks are either classic 
plain, which is just less grouping than classic, or I can put things on a Kanban view based on, you know, the status or other various things that I might want to, you know, Kanban on the task list, the priority, the percent complete. And here, if I want to get into a Gantt chart, I actually have to come over to Gantt and reports. And then within Gantt and reports, I have to come and select my Gantt chart or any of the other various reports that I might want to take a look at within Zoho projects. Reality is though, I think what Zoho projects, uh, the, the development team started to realize is that this is a Gantt chart tool, right? The, the way that Zoho Projects works is highly customized and specific to waterfall or cascade-based projects. And those are best managed via a Gantt chart. So here, now what they've done in Zoho Projects 8, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the new version. The back end of Zoho is getting real confused as I jump back and forth. It's like, make up your mind. Um, but here, now we'll see we've got a different set of groupings or options to view our tasks. So that compact view has gone away because where that lives now is just here under the groupings, right? So if I just want to see all my tasks in a list, it's really the same. I'm just grouping on nothing. I'm not making any grouping choice. And now that that real estate's been freed up, we can go ahead and view this as a Gantt chart. Right. So again, this is really the view that most people want as you're going through and planning out a particular project. Um, right. And this is even useful for like defining dependencies. Right. So let's say that we can't do a project agreement sign off until the blueprint is signed off. Well, now what I can do using this Gantt chart is go ahead and just click and connect each of these various steps to create those dependencies. Again, you could do this before in the old version. You would just have to be in the reports tab specifically, you know, making any of those updates. And so again, nothing too crazy, but a nice update to be able to see that Gantt chart where I want to see it, which is in the task list. Or really, to be honest with you, I want to see it everywhere. That's that's really the main way that we're going to end up using Zoho projects for most of our implementations. So being able to see that here, making those dependencies, making adjustments to the task list or even adding to it. Right, so here, because of this new view, I can go ahead and add something like budget finalization. That'll drop itself just directly here onto my Gantt chart. And once I've set that start date, so it'll show up kind of at like an appropriate point in time. Now it's on my list to be connected. Oops, I need to do a little later. Let's do like 1, 228. So now that task just shows up right in my Gantt view. I can connect it into my workflow and we can set it up with the appropriate dependency. So here back on the task list, we're going to cover two additional features, kind of buttons that have been added um, that make it so that we can actually control automated actions as well as custom field configuration from right here in the task view without having to jump into the settings list. So these two buttons are this automation button and this little tiny add column button. And I'm going to show this one first. So if we go into add column, what we can do in here is actually create entirely new custom fields. So if we had a field that we wanted to add, we can go ahead and do that. Not a problem at all. And we can just add it directly to the layout. Or I can actually create a totally new custom field. So let's say we wanted to add a pick list, call this an example field with values yes, and then I hit enter and no, and add to layout. So now, just like that, this field has been added, our example field. I can go ahead and click and drag it wherever I'd like. So maybe for something like this, I actually want this all the way over here. And we'll have our options of either yes or no, just based on whatever we have set up in our configuration here. Looks like it didn't save my no option. Go ahead and apply that. And so now I can go ahead and make that selection between yes or no for any of the, the uh, particular tasks. And that field has been added here to my project view automatically because it's now created and selected for the view. One that I would say is even more powerful is this automation button. So if we click on the automation, what we can actually do is activate or even create new workflow rules from just directly here within the project. So maybe in this one, we have this notify owner when a task is assigned. And I want to say, hey, let's let's activate that. Boom. Now it's on. I didn't have to dig through settings. I didn't have to go through, you know, 20, 20 menus on the back end of Zoho projects. Um, we all know it can be a bit daunting back there, even for us who use it all the time. I mean, it's just 
layer after layer after layer of settings. Um, we can also even create an entirely new rule based on any of our task updates or creates or really any type of uh, adjustment to the task. And I can actually set up an entirely new workflow um, to accommodate that. So maybe if I want to say that um, when a task is deleted, let's notify somebody. And we'll notify the associated team and the project owner when that task is deleted. And so just like that, We can now set up that workflow and it is now on and active in the system. And it's just that easy. Um, again, just to highlight the old way to do this would be to, if I go back to the old version, I'd have to go into settings. If I wanted to add a custom field like that example field, I would have to come in to customization, tasks, the particular task layout that I'm using for this project. Then I would have to click and drag that field into our layout. And so again, not the end of the world, right? But the reality is, especially if you have projects where different projects require different custom fields, different kind of um, configuration options, uh, being able to easily control this on that list view is great. Now the other side, if I wanted to add that workflow, I'd come into task automation, workflow rules, and then create new workflow rule. What you'll see though, is that these pro these uh, new things that I've created, the workflow and the task are kind of uniquely associated to that layout that from creating from that template, right? So it's gonna be consistent now, anytime that I launch this software development project, it's gonna put it in that layout. And then these unique pieces of customization that I've done are gonna apply for that newly created project. So just an improved workflow there, you could still get to that same point before projects eight, but darn, it's a whole lot easier now when everything is just centralized to this one particular page. Alrighty, so one last kind of type of change here that's been made to Zoho projects that we wanted to cover um, are some improvements to uh, what Zoho kind of calls contextual UI, right? So these are basically UI improvements that make the tool a little easier to use, a little clearer, a little more obvious, you know, how to do what you need to do. Example of that is if I hover, hover over here on a task, now I can right click. Before this wouldn't really do anything, right? You didn't have the option to get this little, what they call a context menu from within a particular task. And it has some useful things like create task below, add subtask. For those who've been using projects for a while, you know that like to add a subtask before, if I go back to old version project seven, here I'm doing a right click, nothing is happening. There is no right click. It just pulls up like my you know browser's version of the right click. And so here to create a subtask, I've got to grab this little three, six dots here. I got to hover over just right so it doesn't reorder it. I want to make it a subtask, right? And now it's going to be defined as a subtask. Here within the new version of Zoho projects, I can just right click, add a subtask, and there it is, right? So I don't need to do those little like click and hovers, those, those little things that just get annoying, especially if you're working with a really big project that you're creating and you need to add lots of subtasks. The old way to do it was create five tasks and then click and drag each individual one um, to define it as a subtask. Other things, being able to quickly create a task above or below a particular example, again, um, I'm really picky about this. I don't like click and drag and having to like line something up right between those two other tasks to make sure it goes in there, but not too high or too low to make it a subtask, um, right? To give you kind of an example of what I'm talking about there. Like if I want to move a task around in the old UI, the scope and wireframe, let's say I want to move it up here or move this wireframe creation. I've got to drag it just in the middle there not so high that it becomes a subtask or so low that it becomes a subtask, but just right in the middle. And now we'll reorganize it. I'm not a big fan of that type of UI. I much prefer just having something like this where I can make things much more easily just using right click options uh, to get where I need to go. Now, one of the other big changes to the Kanban view, this is something that people have kind of been begging for for quite a while, which is the ability to make updates to um, tasks 
from within the Kanban view without having to actually open it up and go into the specific task itself. A couple things here that we can do with the new Kanban views. One, we can create a task from directly within a Kanban, and it will just drop us right onto our Kanban view to be used as a full and fully fledged task going forward in the project. Another thing we can do here is actually set due dates right from the Kanban view that can be saved. I can make task assignments here. So maybe I'll assign it to two people and that'll show. I can start a timer. I can rename it. I can go ahead and open the details of this task, which of course is going to give us like that full task view. But what you can also do, especially if you have a task where things are being worked or tweaked or adjusted, is if there are any comments on the task, we can actually see that here. So by clicking this little pop out button, I can see that there was an example comment left on this task. And I can even leave a new comment here without having to open it up. Um, I can attach files. I can do like anything that I could do within that comment list just natively here directly from the Kanban view. Then, of course, as we move things around, it's going to re-update the status accordingly based on where we're at on the Kanban view when I drop that task. So this is one that I know a lot of people are kind of begging for. Also, the ability to like start the timer here just from the Kanban view. Lots of people work from this list, right, to kind of move things through their pipeline. What Zoho has done is just kind of open up the ability to have that inline editing and the right click for context um, just from directly inside of the Kanban view. So with that, I think we've covered all of the most important updates here for Zoho Projects 8. Again, just kind of going through the updates to the list view, the existence of the template gallery, which is something that I am really excited about, easier access to our Gantt chart, and then last but not least, uh, lots of those context cues and context menus here for making it easier to edit, move, remove, comment on, or interact with your tasks, regardless of which view you happen to be using at that time. I think that'll do it for today. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you did find it useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. Make sure that we're making content that you all are finding valuable. If this sparked any questions or feedback, please be sure to leave that in the comment section below as we do try to read and respond to each and every one of those. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.